Welcome to your CCPS Science Review Lab. I want you to take a look at the picture on your screen. You're going to notice that it's a map. And on your map, you've got some different colored lines. You've got some white lines, and those represent roads. You've got some green areas. Those represent large grassy areas, so sort of undeveloped. You have these blue areas here, the kind of blue blobs that are um, lakes or ponds, waterways, as it were. Now that I've sort of put that in context for you, you're going to notice that there are blue lines as well. Now, this is a map of the out in the Golden Gate Estates area, so I want you to think about what you know about that area and what you think those blue lines represent. And not only what do they represent, but how did they get there? Are they man-made? Are they natural? And why are they there? What do you think about all that? Well, if you guessed that they were canals, you're absolutely right. And if you remember back to sixth grade, um, when we talked about human impact and we talked about um, the trip out to Big Cyprus, we talked about um, canals being man-made, okay, that the Army Corps of Engineers came in and developed those canals. And the reason they were there was to help drain the area. This area was wetlands and they wanted to put up homes. They wanted to break it up into areas that could be sold and homes could be built. So they went ahead and they put these canals in to help drain the areas. And I have a map here. There, there are really two big issues that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about water drainage and we're going to talk about this idea that I have up on your screen of urbanization. Now, Urbanization talks about making an area more developed or more city-like than it was originally. If you look at my top map over here, and then the one on the left shows what Florida looked like back in 1900, okay? And all those different colors represent different types of vegetation. Until we get down here, um, where you get this yellow and this gray and kind of this brown. Um, and then those areas are farms, mixed residential and urban cities and um, rock and sand areas. So where you wouldn't necessarily have plant growth. Okay. So if you look at this first map, map back in the 1900s, um, early 1900s, you see um, a lot of this evergreen color and the sawgrass, um, a lot of maybe the light green that shows evergreens um, and broadleaf trees. So very much what you would expect to see in those natural swamp environments. If you look over here, 1992, so about 92 years later, that yellow, remember that was um, crops and mixed farming. You can see how that has really, really developed. That's an example of urbanization. Now it's not a city per se, okay? It's not necessarily a city, but it's the area becoming less natural and more city-like than it was. So more development occurred. Okay, so and again, when we look down here on this map, it shows um, the on the bottom map, the orange indicates areas um, where residents are, where people live in homes. Look at the map on the left, the way it used to be, and now the map on the right. And you can see that there's a tremendous amount of growth that's occurred. So we have a lot more farms. Over time, we have a lot more homes being built. That means much less room for natural species to occur there. Um, how did they make that happen? That's a big question, okay? Um, because we talked about, when we started talking about these canals. So what does all this city and farming have to do with canals? Well, the water used to drain down in Florida like this. It used to come down the Kissimmee River and through Lake Okeechobee. And then we had a sheet flow sort of effect that happened down through the southern tip of Florida. Okay. Well, we changed that. 
Okay, we went and we moved to control that and we changed the flow of the water so that it would go out to the Atlantic Ocean from Lake Okeechobee over here and out to the Gulf of Mexico over here. And then we controlled all the water down here with canals that allowed those farms to be built. So how did we create opportunities for more urbanization or more development and more farming? We got rid of the water. We moved it. Well, what we found when we moved it is that we did some serious damage, not only to the species, but to the structure of Florida itself. Okay, and it, the entire ecosystem stopped working the way it was supposed to. So they created a plan. Now, this is the plan that they were going to reflood this area down here. They were going to allow that water to flow um, not quite as much as it did originally but they were going to allow more water to flow down into these areas over here. Again, trying to restore that natural balance. So when we talk about the human impact um, humans have on the environment, we are specifically talking about Florida because that is what affects us most. That's what we know and we can visualize most easily. We know that there has been a shift towards urbanization, meaning more homes and more farms more crops being grown, that uses up that land in a way that nature did not intend. So we have fewer native species. It also affects the stability of our land because of the way the water moves, and it also affects the health of our water. So here's a chance to show what you know about human impact. We've said that we want to reflood these areas. We want to change that water flow uh, more similar to what we used to have way it was originally. What are going to be some challenges that we face in rerouting that water flow? I want you to think long and hard about the urbanization that has occurred and talk to me about the challenges with rerouting that water flow. Show what you know. Good luck.